Yung dad ko namatay siya nung bata ako. Parang empty. I, I felt like, Lord, parang imposible ata. Siyempre, naisipan ko rin po na medyo unfair po sa part to kasi nakapagtapos ako pero ito po yung trabaho ngayon. Nung time na yun, kinakabahan ako. Sabi ko, God, ano, natatakot ako. I separated with my wife. That was the lowest point in my life. After noon, bigla ako nawala kasi bumalay ko ako sa dati kong ano, hindi magandang gawain. I learned na it's not just a religion but it's more of a relationship with Christ. And I started really getting more into the Word. There were times na, ano, na parang gusto ko nang bumigay pero nag encouragement lang sa akin na I have to be strong because God is with me. Pinahawakan ko talaga yung Word ni Lord na everything is possible sa Kanya, nakasama Siya. Sobra talagang may ayos yung line ng buhay mo pag makilala mo talaga si Lord. I think He's got a whole list already of never-ending surprises lined up for us if we choose to continue our devotion to the Lord. Hindi natin kailangan malaman or makita kung ano yung ginagawa niya. Kailangan natin gawin is to, to trust Him, to have faith in Him. I'm here to preach the, our fifth installment of our uh, series for Unwavering. But before that, we've noticed Pastor Christian is not here. Uh, they have a vacation with his family, and we're so glad. I, I know he's, uh, he's watching the live stream right now, Pastor Christian. Enjoy your uh, vacation with your family. Just don't forget our pasalubong, all right? So they're um, so excited. And again, uh, I hope you, when you come here every Sunday, I hope this is not a normal Sunday thing for you. Like, you know, you worship God, do the works, lift up your hands, cry a bit. Then, but you're here to experience God. It's just a privilege to come here on a Sunday and just hear the word of God, worship God freely and confidently without even uh, being afraid whether uh, we're going to be caught by the police or something. It's not like this in the other parts of the world. And I hope you appreciate, we appreciate what we have right here in the Philippines. And that's why here today, Every time I come here on a Sunday and preach to you, it's such a privilege for me. I'm so excited what God has to speak to all of us. Are you excited for God to speak to you today? God has a word for all of us here today. I'm so excited on what God has to speak on a specific, on a personal way, but at the same time, on a corporate level as well. And if you've noticed, we've been through this series on unwavering, which, which talks about the faith of Abraham, because every Christian should live by faith. That's this, the reason why we're separated from the world, is because we live by faith in this one true God, in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and how does that look like? We want to learn how is it to live by faith in the life of Abraham. And we've been talking about that for the past couple of weeks. And the last week, no, just if you've been here or, or maybe this is the first time you're here, we talked about faith in covenant, that our faith in God is not based on our ability, it's not based on our skill or even in our faithfulness, but based on the faithfulness of God. If you still could remember our story last week, wherein um, God confirmed the covenant with Abraham, he sliced uh, a lot of animals right there, and uh, in order for them to fulfill the covenant, supposedly the two of them should pass through the, uh, in between those animals that has been uh, slaughtered. But what happened was, God was the one who, who just passed through. And, and as if God is saying, Abraham, I know you're going to fail. I know you're not gonna, going to fulfill this. So I'm passing through because I'm going to be the one who's going to fulfill the righteous requirements of this covenant so I can have a relationship with you and fulfill the great promises that I have for you. That's the kind of relationship with God that we have right now. It's not based on the law. It's not based on our ability to fulfill it, but it's based on the ability of God to fulfill it for us. So what we do is we come always to God and worship Him and, and, and pursue Him all the more despite of our mistakes or our failures. And today, we're going to talk about the, what's the relationship of faith and waiting. Because if you are here today, you believe in faith. How many of you are believing for something? We all do believe for something, right? So if, you believe for the, if you're believing for the promise of God, it takes waiting, right? So it's like here, point A, you're believing, then the promise of God is right here. What do we do in the middle while we are waiting? And there are a lot of ideas out there in the world on how we should wait, okay? And how we should 
perform or how we should act in this middle and waiting section from the, from the believing to the consummation of the promise. And that's what we're going to talk about to do. What do Christians do when they wait? I'm believing for that future spouse. How many of you are singles? Marabe, okay. I'm going to ask that question. How many of you are convinced that you are singles? Okay. How many of you are happily single? Yeah, no, oh, diba? Um, the promise of God is it's not good for a man to be alone, right? Okay, and we're believing for that future spouse. We're be- oh, see, I'm, I'm hearing more amens right here. Uh, so if you believe, God wants you to get married, okay? That's a, that's a desire of God, that's the design of man. But what do you do while you wait? Since he's not here yet, what do you do? What does a Christian do who attends the 11 a.m. service in Victory Fort, 32nd Street, University Parkway? What does a Christian do in that? So that's what we want to look at today in the life of Abraham. What did he do as he was waiting? And that's why he was called the father of faith. All right? So if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn with me in the book of Genesis, chapter 16, and also verses... Um, 17 verses 1 to 2. So if you have, uh, can we all stand up in reverence to God's word? Let's all go there. Genesis, so Gen- the book of Genesis is so easy to, um, to locate. It's the first book in the Bible. So Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, And she had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened in an by, by her, and Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. In verse 17, verse 1 to 2, said here, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I'm God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Can we just pray? Lord, we thank you. Thank you for these words. God, it's such a privilege to be here. Thank you, God, for bringing us here to listen to your word. And God, I pray that every word that I say would come from the very spirit of God. I pray, God, that you supercharge it by your spirit. I pray, Father, for every heart today to be open. Lord God, to receive your word that, so that we might receive it and apply it and multiply it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. We're going to all sit down. Now before I preach to you the entire, uh, the, these chapters, we're going to cover a long story. But uh, let me give you a background on what's happening here in Genesis 16 and Genesis 17. Now if you, if you saw this, uh, if you've been following this uh, preaching, we started in Genesis 12. In Genesis 12, God called Abraham to go to another country, leave his family, leave his nation, and go to the land that, he would, that God would show to him, and he's going to make his name great, he's going to bless him, whoever curses him will be cursed, whoever blesses him will be blessed. And that's a great promise. And Abraham, being the father of faith, he went out of his family, out of his nation, out of his father's household, and went to the land that God has shown him. And as a, as, a, as a father of faith that he was, then he called upon the name of the Lord, and he started to have a relationship with God. One of the first followers of God from the times of Noah. Remember Noah? We're in, uh, G- God saved humanity through that family, but yet God eradicated a lot of people. Then the people sinned again. Then nobody is following God again. Then now God has brought Abraham again as one of the first believers of God. Then now he had a relationship with God. And in the process of that, Genesis 12, Genesis 13, he was not perfect. He he had a lot of, uh, he made mistakes here and there in Egypt. And, but yet God was still faithful to call him as a, as a father of many nations. Then the covenant stayed. Then he had fights when he was started to stay in, in Canaan. And God confirmed that this is the land that I'm going to call, I'm going to show you. The faithfulness of God and the wickedness of man in the life of Abraham. But still God was faithful to call him the father of many nations. Then he stayed there in Canaan, fought different kings. God was with him, saved Lot. As in, if you're going to watch a movie, it's like, Lord of the Rings, and Abraham was so uh, very victorious. 
But Genesis chapter 16 is kind of anticlimactic to this story because you will see that God, in Genesis chapter 15, God confirmed the covenant to, uh, to Abraham again. And that's what I told the story a while ago, where in God has slaughtered animals, like, put it into half, then he, he confirmed it, that I'm going to fulfill this. I'm going to bless you. I'm going, you're going to make your name great. You're going to fall. But Abraham, this is the covenant. This is about me. So the response should be like, Lord, I'm going to follow you. God, I'm going to give my life to you. Lord, I'm going to go to church, go to my victory group, do one, do one, do all of the classes. I'm, I'm going to follow you the whole time. But that's not what's happening in Genesis chapter 16. In Genesis chapter 16, then Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female e e Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Ab Abraham, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Now Sarah is complaining. Maybe Abraham has been telling them, you know what? God is promising us we're going to be the father of many nations. You're going to be a mother of many nations. And Sarah is telling him, you're right. We don't have kids. Behold, I don't have kids. And he's complaining. And behold now, and it may be that I shall obtain children. Um, he said, behold now, the Lord is present for bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai. Okay, let's, let's move here. And basically, wh what's happening here is, it's been 10 years that they've been staying in the land of Canaan when, when they won from the kings and God confirmed the covenant. 10 years. And they know the promise. I'm going to be a father of many nations, mother of many nations. God's going to bless us. First year happened. We're still going to wait for that baby. Second year happened. In Canaan, it's not, Lord, iba na to, huh? I've been waiting for this. Fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year happened. Waiting for a long time. Seven years of waiting for that promise. It's not happening. Eight years, nine years, ten years. He's saying, God, enough is enough. I'm going to do this on my own. Sarah is saying. And it's, and it's a very legitimate question. Because during that time, when you're, a, when you're a matriarch of the entire community and you don't have kids, it's a, it's a disgrace for you, okay, having no kids. It's like, this is a disgrace for me, and God is promising many nations, baby nga, wala eh. I'm gonna put this in my hands. God, I want a baby. That's what's happening right here. And that, again, that's a very legitimate question. And the answer and their solution that they want to use here is a very legitimate solution. Because during their time, it is a common custom for the, the, the servant to be given to the husband. If they don't have kids, and they're going to have kids with the servant, and that servant would inherit everything. That's what all of the nations have been doing. Actually, the surprise here was, why did they wait 10 years for this suggestion to come out? Actually, maybe Abraham was just waiting. I'm just waiting. When are you going to tell me to do that? Just like what happened in the garden, right? When Eve was asking, which is another preaching. So that's what's happening here. It's a legitimate question, a legitimate solution, and a legitimate need. But what's the problem right here? Why is this? a problem in their relationship with God because there was a promise. Because God promised them that not through Hagar, but through you. That's the promise, eh? Through you, I'm going to bless the nations. Through your seed, through your offspring, I'm going to bless all of the nations through you. They don't like the idea of waiting on the Lord and God fulfilling it. They want to do it on their, their, their own selves. I don't like waiting. Do you like waiting? Do you like waiting in this traffic? If, there, if there's a, a group of patient people, it's Filipinos because of traffic every single day, except for Sundays. I don't like the idea of waiting. You, especially when you're running late and you're, about, you're driving and it's like you want to remove all of the cars in EDSA. Okay, so that you can go to your destination. It's like you want to get out of your you want to get out of your car and just bring your umbrella and say, "Let my people go part the Red Sea." Okay, and just drive. As if if we could just do that. 
because all of these cars are hindrances to my goal to arrive in my... We don't like to wait. What are you waiting for? What, what are the things that you've been waiting God, from God? What are the promises that you're believing from God that until now, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years, you're still believing God for? All right? Maybe if you're here, again, you're a single person, you're believing for that future spouse. It's been seven, eight, nine, ten, lumapas, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60. I, I, and until now, it's not happening. Maybe you're here today, you're believing for that healing. And you come to church and the pastor would tell you, God is a healer, but it's not happening in my life. My mom is in there, the hospital, battling cancer, and you're telling me. Until now, we're maybe you're here today, you're believing for justice to be served. We're believing for this. And you're, you're believing for justice to be served so that you'd, you'd be set, uh, set free from all of these uh, legal obligations. And you're like Abraham, tempted to do to acquire godly things to acquire the promise of god in an ungodly way that's the problem with abraham eh? god has promised them something which is a very godly promise which is a baby which is eh, nations nga, eh? nations of the world eh? but they tried to accomplish it not by the ways of god but by the ways of the world the culture during that time maybe you're in a season that's like that you're being tempted to do that lord under the table na lang Okay, anyway, if I win in this legal battle, I'm going to tie 10% of what I'm going to win here. Maybe you're in that season. Maybe you're believing for kids. To have an, you, this, is, this is my kids, no? And, and it's like, maybe you're believing for, to, to have kids. It's been how many years? And you're so tempted, God, you don't love me. It's not happening. It's not working. Sarah and Abraham wanted a baby. And during that 10 years, they've been waiting. It was all they wanted to have. It was all they wanted to have. Their lives revolved around getting the baby. That's why they used this ungodly way, this worldly, culturally accepted way to, to acquire it. If you're going to fill up this uh, blank, what's, what would that be? I want A, I want an. Maybe for some of you, I want a husband. Maybe for some of you, I want, a, I, want a bus I want my business to flourish. Maybe it's a legal battle that you want to be set free. May it be sickness, maybe it be healing. May it be financial breakthrough. May it be a business. May it be something that you really wanted and seemingly good and godly things that you wanted to have, what would that be? But if that answer on that blank is all that there is that you restructure, that your life revolves in, then we got a problem. We are becoming what's happening right here in the life of Sarah and Abram. You know what the Bible calls that? That's what we call idolatry. I'm not saying only people who have iPhones have idolatry or even Android guys, okay? <laughs> But what I'm saying is, if all there is that you worship, that's why we compromise it. Because you want a baby with a Sarah and Hagar. Because you want that spouse. Siya na lang, kahit mukhang Christian. <laughs> you want that business under the table. You want this. You want that. It's all about what you want, but is that really, are we getting it the way God wants us to get it? And if you're going to define idolatry, it's simply godly things acquired in an ungodly way. Have you been in such a situation? A career? A relationship? But if it's done and acquired in a godly way, that's idolatry. C.S. Lewis said it this way, pleasure, money, power, and safety are all, as far as they go, good things. The badness consists in pursuing them by the wrong method or in the wrong way or too much wickedness turns out to be pursu pursuit of some good in the, in the wrong way. Meaning wickedness turns out to be pursuit of some good in the wrong way. Whatever it is that you're trying to get, but if there, it's all that there is that your life revolves around, that's what we call idolatry. 
And in the life of Sarah and Abraham, Sarai and Abraham, they got what they wanted. They still go back. I, I want you to read the story. Go to Genesis 16. When, when, when Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham, immediately, Hagar conceived. They got what they wanted, right? But what happened? What does the Bible say after that? Then Sarah treated Hagar with contempt. As if he treated her so badly, he was so, she was so angry with what happened. I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to look at the situation. I feel like the Sarai just have hormones during that time. She doesn't know what she wanted. She, she, she wanted a baby, then now she had a baby, then now she was so angry. And like if, sometimes I experience that with my wife if when, when she, was, uh, she was having a lot of, her, when her hormones are out of whack, she doesn't know what she wants. I don't know. Okay, and this is what's happening right here. And she hated it. And, and that's what happens when we exchange the promise of God for ungodly things, or nor we exchange God for ungodly things. We will hate that very thing. It was a reminder for him that I wasn't faithful. And, he, and Sarah realized, I wanted a baby. I wanted to be dignified in this community. But she realized, apart from God, this is not what I wanted. When you try to get that career, when you try to get that spouse, when you try to get that relationship, when you try to get that fame, power, and honor without God in it, in it you will realize that that is not the very thing that you really wanted. Because those are the things that's not going to fulfill nor going to give meaning in your life, going to give you security, going to give you significance. It is God. When you remove God in the process, you will hate the very thing that you'll exchange God for. Could you imagine? And after this, the baby was born. All right? Then God saw Sarah as she was, uh, God saw Hagar as she was about to go to go back to Egypt because because her master despised her. Then God saw her and God blessed her. I heard you. I saw you. I'm going to bless you. Your, 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 your kid is gonna, name's going to be Ishmael and nation's going to come, come from before him. And I'm going to bless him. And he named that place Bir Lahairo as the God of seeing. That's the first time that was quoted that God sees. And, and, and dur during that time, God told him, you know what, Hagar, I want you to go back. I'm going to bless you. I want you to go back to your master, Hagar. Could you, could you imagine Hagar coming back with the baby? And as a reminder to Sarah and Abraham, you did not obey. You did not believe. You did not. Could you imagine the condemnation in the life of Abraham? And you know how many years it took? 13 years. Every single year, every single day, he sees it in the tent. And I just want to minister to some of you here today. Maybe you're here, you've been a Christian for a long time, and you've been waiting for God's promise. And as in the process of waiting for the promise of God, you've compromised along the way, and somehow you're condemned. You feel like God will not bless me anymore because I made these mistakes. Maybe you've been trying to, trying to, to work yourself out your, your life before God. That God, bless me. I'm going to attend church. I'm going to attend Victory Group. I'm going to work this out because I feel like I'm not enough. Or maybe you're here. You're, you're there in the podcasts or in the live stream, not going to church because you feel like you don't deserve to be in church because of all of the compromises that you have done in the past. Let me tell you here today, you're in a situation the same as the father of faith, like Abraham. But the good news for us is this. In Genesis 17, when Abraham was 99 years old, 13 years exactly after that happened, the Lord appeared to Abraham. It was not Abraham who went to him. Because if Abraham was the one who went to him, it would have been recorded. But it was God in his condemnation. It was God who appeared. He said, 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me. And be blameless that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. What can we learn here? Sarah failed in waiting. Right? They compromised. Abram failed in waiting. But God waited. He knew they're going to commit mistakes. He knew they're going to miss it. But God was patiently waiting. If you're here today, 
you feel like God cannot bring you back, God is just waiting for you. This is not about, this life of faith is not about our ability to wait. Because our ability to wait is so flawed, we are so wicked, we are so sinful, one day we're so faithful, the next day we're not. Have you ever noticed that? You're so on fire on church on a Sunday, then Monday something happens in the office, then bam, and as if all of the Christian ideas went out of the window. But despite all that, God is patiently waiting for you. If you're there in the live stream, you've been waiting for that opportune time to come back. God has been waiting for you. God is so merciful. God is in his forbearance. He even waited for how many years for all of us to be saved. He's just waiting for all of us to come back. And he said here, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Now, you'll see here that yes, God was patient. Yes, God was waiting because he knew that Abram cannot be faithful in waiting. But he also, you will also see in these verses that the blessings are conditional. Yes, he's waiting and how many times are you gonna fail? I'm just gonna be here with you, but I'm not gonna fulfill this promise without you, all right? He's gonna wait for you until you get it. But if you have to get it, that's what he's saying. And you see that when Abraham was 99, he appeared and he said to him, he just fell face down. Could you just imagine here? I, I want you to picture this, this, this scene with me because could you imagine what Abram has been feeling when, Abram, when God was talking to him and God appeared to him and he was looking at Sarah, he was looking at Hagar and remem remembering everything that he has done. God, I wasn't faithful. God, I wasn't following you, right? But yet you're here with me and I'm just face down in humble humility. But God, why are you doing this to me? Why are you still following me? Why do you still want me to? Because that's just who God is. God wants us to be with him and do this and fulfill this promise with him. But at the same time, he said here, but we will not be able to, to, to see the consummation of all of these things if you're not going to walk before me. Now, the, the, the words walk before me here, the, the, the trick, tricky part is that it's the same word that he used when he called Abram. Remember in Genesis 12? Go to the land that I will show you. Go to the, leave your family. Your, the word go there is the same as the word walk. It's the same. It's if you're going to put that in Hebrew context, in Hebrew culture, it talks about living your life. It talks about proceeding about your life. And he said, proceeding about your life before me. He's, God is saying, walk before me. Reorient your life before me. Make me the center of your life. Let your life... Let me be your life. That's what he's saying. And if you're going to look at even and study more what the meaning of the word walk here is that he even sup made it a super superlative word, meaning he's saying, don't, don't just do it because you need to do it, but walk, meaning be involved, be passionate, love me, follow me. That's what he's saying. That's, there is emotions, there is intensity, there is involvement of the mind, body, and the will. That's what these words are trying to say. Thinking about the benefits it's going to bring you. You know how staggering that is? God is saying, I want you to walk before me because this establishment of the promise, of my grace, of the, you're going to be a blessing to all of the nations. Count all the stars if you can count them. Sand in the seashore. This is going to happen, Abraham. I don't want you to mess your life and settle for one boy. I want you to, so you need to walk before me. Be involved. If I'm going to illustrate this to you, could you remember the first time you met your wife? If you're married today and you're sitting be beside your wife, can you just look at your wife? Could you remember the first time you saw that face? As if the whole world blurred and she was the only one that you saw. And you saw she's the one, okay? When was the last time? I, I, I guess you could remember, I have a friend in college, and when she, 
first day of class, she saw a beautiful classmate of ours, and she was so beautiful, but different blocks. So what she did, all of the classes that this girl goes to, she, she's there. And even the classes that she, it's not, even if it's not his class, he's going to go there. Okay? And the, and the teacher is asking, why are you here? I'm just here. I'm, I'm here for that lady. Okay? And, and the, that's how his life changed. He reoriented his schedule, reoriented his life for that. The first time I met my wife. When I realized that this is the person that God that you have prepared for me, I think my, to my life totally changed. My budget changed. My, <laughs> my, not because it's expensive, but because of I, I just have more, more things to my budget. My calendar changed. My trips changed. My life was totally reoriented, not because I need to, not because I was forced dragging myself, not because I need to put it in my resume. I'm the girlfriend. I'm the boyfriend of... It's not because of that. It's because I love her. It's because I like her. I don't need to be forced to do that. And, and because I know the benefits of it. Imagine being the boyfriend, being the husband of this, of Grace Bordal. It's, for me, that's a total achievement. Rave, Lord, thank you. I don't, those are the benefits of it. And my life totally changed. Imagine I was go going in and out of the Philippines, Singapore, Philippines, because she was busy in Singapore during that time. I don't have that much money, but I'm willing to go through all of the efforts. Because that's how passionate I was about this. That's what God is saying when He says, walk before me. When He says, walk before me, love me. Know that I'm favorably disposed for you. What God is saying, say, walk before me, reorient your entire life for me because it's worth it. And I'm going to bless you. I tell you, my son, my daughter, you're not going to contain it. I'm going to do it. It's going to be established, but walk before me. It's still conditional. Basically, what God is saying is lifestyle change. Your life has to change. This is what we need to do. Basically, the, what God is saying through the life of Abraham, as you wait, is this. Walk before him. You're hearing the promise, I'm gonna, God's going to bless you, the healing's going to come, the blessing's going to come, all the nations going to be blessed through you. But even if it's not yet happening, walk with Him every step of the way. So how do we break down walking with God? Number one is hearing God's voice. Because the same with Abram, he heard God's voice. He heard two voices actually. First he heard God's voice, then he heard Sarai's voice. I'm not saying you don't listen to your wife. Okay, husbands, this is not um, uh, an excuse. In fact, in, in, this is what I realized. With my, ito, side story na lang, no? In, what, what I realized was that sometimes, and most of the time, God speaks through my wife. She's the Holy Spirit talaga eh, sa buhay ko. Okay, you know, God speaks through her. Basically, it's another preaching. But here, God, hear God's voice. And you hear God's voice through God's word. That's why we come here today, so that we can listen to God's word. You read God's word, all right? And, um, and, and that, that uh, you reorient your life. It's not an excuse that we are busy. I don't know what are the excuses of Abraham during that time. Why they didn't call upon the name of the Lord. Maybe he thought, ah, we have a lot of herds, livestock. There are a lot of places to conquer. Maybe, I really don't know. But never did you see during that time of 10 years in Canaan, okay? Ten years of waiting that you'll see that they really sought the Lord. They, they're not. In fact, he listened to the voice of his wife, which is the voice of the world. That was the world's way of acquiring a baby during that time. If you cannot bear a child, what are you willing to do to reorient your life so you can hear the word of God every single day? Right now, I need to reorient my life. Uh, as what I've said a while ago, I'm, I'm also a pastor of Victory Cebu, so I go in and out of Cebu during... Right now, then I'm, I'm in school, in our school of church leadership. Then I recently had twins. Then I have a two-year-old toddler. Then I still have to date my wife. I'm not complaining, Grace, if you see this, okay? But this is just my reality, okay? This is my reality. And I need to reorient my life. What I realize, if I don't wake up 5.30 to 6 a.m., I cannot hear God's voice. Because when 6.30 strikes, Lois will wake up and I'm going to hear her voice 
Papa, Papa, play Lego. Okay, and th- th- that's what I'm going to hear. Play guitar. And, then, and if she's my priority, I have to put God first and reorient and have to wake up. But, so I have to sleep early. And all of these things. All right? So that is a non-negotiable right now. How I wish God could speak like how he spoke to Abraham. Ren. Abraham. Okay, Abraham, Abraham, go to the land of the... I hope God would speak that way, but God doesn't speak that way now. He speaks more of God's word. So next is covenant relationships. That's how important victory groups are. That's how important mentoring is. That's how important relationship in church. I hope you just don't come to church to attend church as if it's clockwork on a Sunday. But you're here to really know God and have a relationship with God. And that's, this is one of the ways wherein we have relationship, is to hear God's voice and you have a relationship with people around you where God could speak to you. God could talk to you through the people and correct you. How many of you know you need to be corrected? Do you believe that? Parang konti lang, no? Perfect yung iba. So, pero really, uh, it's, we, we all need for people to speak to us. And lastly is that if you're here, you're, if you're here and you're not, uh, you're not a believer yet, it is not for you. But if you're here, you're a believer, and you, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, I tell you, this is the most powerful part. God can speak to you through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not miss it. He will remind you of verses. He will remind you if it's not of God. He will, you, will, you will sense it and you will know it. The Holy Spirit will, 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 will be a testimony inside of you to tell you that this is not the way of God. All right? So that's, first, you hear it. Next is believe the future promises of God. So you hear God's voice. Next, believe the future promises because God does a lot. In, and in these verses, God is telling, I'm going to bless you exceedingly. Do you know what? God's going to bless you. Whether you believe it or not does not negate the promises of God. The promises of God stands true, but you need to believe it for it to happen in your life. But whether you believe it or not, the promise of God stands true. You're going to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Blessed to be a blessing. You're going to be empowered to do good works. God's going to use you as a blessing to the nations. You're going to make disciples of all nations. That's the promise of God for every Christian. The promise of God is that you're going to be able to give beyond your poverty. Even if you're in lack, you'll be able to give. Even if you don't have the ability to speak, at the time that you will need it, you're going to give a testimony. He's the one going to give you the words to speak so that God would be glorified. Now, those are the promises for the Christian. It will happen to all of us. Believe it. Claim it. Can we give God a praise? Because I encourage you to believe it. Because there's no other way to receive it. Because it's by faith. But next is, I don't want to narrow it down, obey his present commands. A lot of us, a lot of Christians, are so into the future, forgetting that they are in the present. Forget, are so into the future, I'm waiting until Jesus comes. Ay, darating na si Lord. As in, oh, looking at those YouTube videos about the second coming of Jesus. As if the Bible tells us signs and everything. But you know what the Bible says? You will not know. It's like a thief in the night. We're so looking at there in the future promises and forgetting what has God wanted you to do in the present. You're so looking at in the future, God's gonna use us to go to the nations. What are you doing right now to reach out your community? God is so looking, I'm gonna give millions, but are you giving your tithes? Do you see what I mean? What is God telling you to do right now? God is telling you, I'm going to be a blessing to other people, but how are you with your wife? Are you treating her right? How are you with your kids? Are you discipling them? Obey the present commands. Love. How about justice? How about showing mercy to other people? How about humility? We're so into the bigger, grander things of Christianity, forgetting what God is telling us to do now. Just like Abraham, looking at the promise of God of being a blessing to other nations, but yet forgetting what is God telling him to do now, which is to wait. What is God telling you to do now?
Maybe for some of you, God is telling you to come back. Maybe for some of you, God is telling you to quit that habit. Maybe God is telling you right now to give. Maybe God has blessed you so much, as in way beyond, and God has been telling you to give and you're not giving for the longest time. Maybe you're here today. God is just telling you to wait. Maybe you're single and you're waiting. Again, I want to go back to that illustration. Five, ten years you've been waiting. And Lord, will it happen? Darating ba talaga? Will, will this, uh, this perfect person, perfect, no? She's not perfect. I tell you, when you, it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> will, will that really happen? Will that really happen? Because the point is not the promise. The point is not the fulfillment even of the promise. The, po- the point is what are you going to do now while you're waiting for the promise of the fulfilled promise? And, the, and even for the singles, the goal is not to get married. The goal is to honor God. Amen? Right. And even if it will not happen, it's okay because a time will come where in the bride, the, the bridegroom, we're going to be married to Christ and we will never lack anything. All right? Parang konti lang ah. So, sige. But, but really, the, what are we doing in the present? And we can't hide in our obedience, in our performance. Sometimes, in our waiting, we hide in our performance of Christianity. I do this for God. I give that for God. I volunteer for God. I work for God. I'm here for God. Forgetting what does God want you to do now. That's different. That's obedience. Forgetting, I want you to approach that person and forgive that person and bless that person. I want you to, what is, that, what is God doing to you personally? In Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 2, I wanted to um, stress this all the more. He said, I am God Almighty, walk before me. He's saying, be intensely involved in this. Worship me. Reorient your entire life for me as you wait for the promised coming of the, pro- the fulfillment of the promise. But as you wait and walk, reorient everything for me because I will, I will that, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. In other translations, it's called that I may establish it. Okay, and multiply you greatly. What he's saying is that as you do that, as you reorient your life, as you wait faithfully on me, as you worship me, as you wait for the promises and wait for me to accomplish it for you and do what I am calling you to do in the now. See, Abram, I'm going to establish this for you. When I said that I'm going to bless the nations through you, it's going to happen. When I say that your, your descendants are going to be many, as many as the stars in the sky, many as the sta- sand in the seashore, it's going to happen. And what, I, what he's saying is that us, as we come to God today, as we wait faithfully, as we obey Him, as we read His Word, as we pray, as we come together and pursue His will more than anything else in the world, know and realize that God's going to fulfill His promise. God's going to make it happen. And I don't know when, I don't know how, but once things for sure it's gonna happen why because that's the kind of God who God is and he has been waiting for a very long time in Genesis we have been failing over and over and over again what has happened he has waited God brought Noah saved Noah we failed again God has been waiting God brought Abraham failing a lot of times God has been waiting God raised up the judges and the kings failed again God has been waiting Brought up Moses, brought all of these people, brought the prophets, and even a prophet Isaiah, he prophesied the coming fulfillment of the seed that will fulfill everything, and that seed is Jesus. And what the Bible is saying is that if we believe in this seed, on the fulfillment of the promise, then we will become heirs according to the promise of Abraham, that we too shall be children of Abraham. Now, maybe you're thinking, as great as these promises are, I don't, know, I don't think God can fulfill that for me. I've been patiently waiting for you to be finished. Maybe you've been. But let me tell you this. If God can bless Hagar, who is an Egyptian, and just because he was part of the family of Abraham, 
and, the, and, and, and a fruit of the disobedience of Abraham. If God can bless Hagar exceedingly and many nations and many people came out before him, how much more God can bless the child of the promise, which is Isaac. How much more God can fulfill all of the many promises that he has given to him that truly is going to bless him, that truly many nations are going to be blessed through him. How much more he's going to bless you which, if you believe in the finished work of Christ, which is the seed and the fulfillment of all of those promises. God will surely bless you. God will surely fulfill His promises for you. But the question is, are you going to come back? Because He is waiting patiently. Can we all stand up today as we end and as we pray? I just want to pray for some set of people today. If you're here, um, if you're here today, you've been, you've been waiting for a long time and it's just all faith is gone and all and you've you felt like you've missed it along the way you've compromised you've sinned along the way and you felt like god's not gonna bless me and you heard this message and and you want to believe god again god i want to come back to you as you've been waiting for me to believe you again if you're this person, I want to pray for you. I believe God is here to bless you. God is here to strengthen you. God is here to bring you back. Are you going to come back to God? Can you just lift up your hand if that's you? I see your hand, ma'am. Anybody else? I see that hand on the side. I see this hand in front. I see these hands at the back. Lord, just thank you. Thank you, Father, for these people. Thank you, Lord God for your goodness. God, I just thank you, Lord, that you're strengthening them right now in Jesus' name. I believe what the Bible is saying is that the old is gone and the new has come. At the same time, if you're in Christ Jesus, therefore, there is now no condemnation. All condemnation has been nailed on the cross. And I believe God is telling you, don't stand condemned. Don't stand weak. Don't stand because I've been waiting for you. And I believe as you have stepped up right now and come back to me, I'm blessing you. I'm strengthening you. I'm giving you the grace right now to believe for the promises. If you're here today, you've been you saying, I want to believe again. I want to believe that God is good. I want to believe that He's going to bless me. God is saying, it's not even about you. I'm going to give you the ability to believe. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to bring people around you who's going to speak these things to you. And I speak out right now, faith, rise up upon your people. Rise up, faith. We're going to believe again. We're going to believe again for the greater things of God. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, that even as they raise their hands today, you're blessing them and you're telling them that you love them, that you're not taking, they're taking their sins against them, and you want to bring them in again, Lord God, so that they would be able to walk this faith again, just like Abraham who became the father of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Let's all give God a praise.